Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, as you can see here on your screen, we are looking at an aerial view of Yellowstone National Park. Uh, the super volcano, the volcano that just kind of lays flat, doesn't really do much of anything. And, uh, and of course, there's been all kinds of predictions over the years as to uh, when will this thing actually end up er erupting. Well, I got a message yesterday uh, from some friends in Washington there, and there was a very concerning update that was given to me about... Uh, this particular volcano and uh, very real possibility of what could happen in the uh, next year or even in 2023. And uh, I've been trying to do as much as I can to kind of corroborate the information to share it with you guys. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and again, I just hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's just 2022 and 2023 are just not going to be good years here on planet Earth. And, um, the percentage, though, is is for the eruption of um, the Yellowstone uh, supervolcano that's just been laying dormant is still relatively low. It'll be 60 percent. But I was told that in May of either 22 to 2022 or May of 2023, that there is a 60 percent chance of an eruption uh, during that particular month on both both years there. Uh, it has to do with um, uh, with cosmic and magnetic uh, issues that we're going to be facing during that time period. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why I've not been putting much of this information on Israeli News Live, our regular YouTube channel, or iConnectFX, because there's very few people that really want to hear about this type of things anymore. Uh, but but I feel that I may even after I run it here on Patreon, we may after a day or so go ahead and and let this air publicly as well like that for other people. Uh, but I was told that there are several celestial bodies influencing the May estimate, and that's what's going to be causing this. And uh, it's going to have, like I said, a cosmic and a magnetic uh, attributes that gives it about a 60% chance of this thing actually erupting. Uh, those of you that, I don't, and I'm, I'm trying to keep, keep up, I've been taking so many notes from our, the meeting that I had this, uh, this earlier this week, and uh, actually it was about three hours, we were meeting on multiple different subjects there, and I still have not had a chance to bring all of that information out. I've been going back over my notes to, to, so I can share these things with you. I've been feeling majorly under the weather as well, though, so uh, so I just I took like 15,000 milligrams of vitamin C just last night. There's no reason why I can actually sit here and, and make this video with you guys now. But I also checked with a friend of mine uh, in FEMA, an engineer in FEMA there, and uh, he's got a good friend that has a lot of good uh, inside military contacts, uh, also with scientists, things of that nature there and to see if they knew anything as well. And he came back and, and said to me that uh, it is cosmic related. And yes, they are anticipating, uh, or at least what he believes it could be, uh, the reason why that uh, Pentagon scientists are expecting this to happen is because we're going to have a lot of solar cosmic activity in 2022. Um, in my meeting that I had, earlier in the week there that I've not spoke very much about, at least I don't think I have as of yet. Um, I was told that they don't, there, there's going to be a major loss of life uh, globally as uh, these next few years move on from multiple different issues. Uh, part of that will be because of things that are, people are taking in their body, but more so it's going to be what we might call weather related or even weather manipulated events that are happening. Uh, I don't know how much of this we could say is manipulated when we're dealing with the cosmos and what happens there. But if you remember in the interview that I did with uh, Brother Gary Lowry and when he was abducted, he actually stated that the uh, these entities, these fallen angels had said to him, that they would send a giant asteroid uh, to 
wipe out large parts of our population on this earth uh, in the near future. Uh, of course, that was back, uh, I don't know how many years ago. I think, I think with Gary, that was back either in the 80s or the 90s that that happened to him. So I keep that in mind as well, that even the cosmos can be manipulated. And although I do know when our, with our secret space program that we have, we are constantly trying to deflect, move, and destroy these things. And uh, as I was told about the one asteroid uh, that's a quarter of a mile wide that's supposed to hit off the subsubduction zone in, um, off of the coast of California, that they continue to try to break this thing apart. Uh, the Chinese have been doing their part in trying to break this up because, after all, the Chinese, even though they're planning on taking over this country in the near future, they still they don't want... Um, to lose the assets and, and what they have here either. So they are really trying to do something as well. And uh, so as we look at all this, um, we are really moving in a very difficult time moving forward. And as I've said, stated uh, re recently, I think on a different broadcast, you know, the only safe place is in Jesus Christ. There is no other safe place on this planet, you know, uh, I'll never forget when I was in the meeting recently, I was told that, you know, those that actually perish first are probably the more blessed ones because of all the um, aftermath of things that are going to happen on the earth. When you think about aftermath, it's because of, say, for example, whether it be plasma lightning, whether it be uh, volcanoes, earthquakes, all these things that are happening, uh, you know, those things we know are going to happen because Jesus told us they were going to happen. And so that's one thing, and I just I want to pull the scripture up on that just as a reminder there, you know, we, we shouldn't think anything out of the ordinary about these things. You know, and some people, they kind of, they mock, they ridicule, and they're like, oh, that's not going to happen and stuff like that. But totally forgetting what Jesus said in Matthew 24, that, you know, as he sat there on the Mount of Olives, he talks about one, about the not one stone would be left upon another, right? But then he goes into verse 6. Um, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We also have a scripture, uh, I forget exactly where it's at there. I'll see if I can pull it up while, while I'm speaking to you guys on this. But... Um, and I, I don't remember who actually stated it as Jesus, but maybe I can find it real quick. Uh, the sea would be roaring, right? The sea would be roaring. And that's actually, um, uh, let's see, it's actually, I think yeah, it was Jesus. And uh, Luke 21, 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, all right? So like, and, and Luke 21, 25 is really just a reflection. Let me see if I can pull it up for you guys to be able to see this as well. Uh, it's just a reflection of Matthew 24. So whereas in Matthew 24, we just get the earthquakes in diverse places, things like that. In Luke uh, 21, let me Pull that up real quick. You know, I've noticed that the King James uh, Online Bible has really been s very slow in responding lately, like no other site. And you know what? The, it's kind of a little side note I thought about. That tells me they got a lot of people, a lot of people that are um, using their site there. A lot of people are nervous with, without, without question. All right, so Luke 21, 25. And did I get it on the right place? Oh, I'm in Matthew. Sorry. I thought I switched over to Luke, but I'm still in Matthew. So let me go over to Luke. Yes, that's what I talk about. This morning it's not as bad, but, uh, but yeah, it's really been, I'm sweating a lot from this. I got a little flu bug here, and it's really had me under the weather a lot. Um, uh, okay, and they shall fall, verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall lead away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the, Genti times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. 
And there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, upon the earth, the stress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. Notice that. Powers in the heaven shall be shaken. You know, so when we talk about the cosmos and things like that happening, we should not be surprised by this because it's written by Jesus himself. His own words that were recorded by Luke. Uh, waves roaring, tidal waves. You know, the sea and the waves roaring. Notice that's kind of interesting just in itself. The sea and the waves roaring. You ever think about it like that? It's not just a wave. It's also the sea itself. And the waves. So that's like. You know, not like a regular storm or anything. Something is really causing a climatic event on the oceans. And I have heard from some of the scientists before that, uh, in fact, in one meeting I was in, we were discussing about the rotation of the earth and just the fact of the rotation of the earth itself causes the waters to be pressed out towards the equator. And that if you begin to shift the magnetic poles of the earth which they are shifting anyway, but if they, if they shift suddenly, that water would be displaced all over the planet. It would be like the case of filling up a bathtub, putting it in the back of your pickup truck and sitting in there and suddenly stop and go and stop and go and all the water going back and forth just really wildly, but on a far greater scale. So anyway, like I said, I hate to be the bearer of bad news on these things here. But at the same time, I think we should be happy because we know that our redemption uh, draws nigh. And uh, soon everything will be over. And, uh, and I'm just looking forward to going home. I'm really sick of being here in this, this world um, with all the ungodliness and all the demonic influences that are on this planet. I'm Steve Benner, and you're watching Israeli News Live here on Patreon.